The age of rock is over. EDM rules this city. Oh yeah? Well, how about you take all these exes and shove them up your- How do you feel when someone compares one game to another as a selling point? Because personally, I think that's more of a good thing than a bad thing. In the past, I've seen a lot of people, including myself, say a game is bad purely because it's too similar to something else. But I think when trying to explain certain games to friends, using a comparison can make things a hell of a lot easier. Let me give you a couple of examples. New Super Lucky's Tale is a platformer that's very similar to games like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. Or how about something like Ashen? It's a very beautiful game with gameplay that's pretty much identical to Dark Souls, but it tones it back a bit with all the bullshit. So you get an idea in your head of what the game might be like. Both of these games I've just mentioned are games that I'm rather fond of and I've sung their praise previously in videos, but does that lessen the impact or enjoyment of a game? No, of course not. A game being bad just because it's like something else is a really stupid argument. A game can be compared to another game by all means, but there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like it's an excuse to unfairly criticise a game as a standalone product. Or, you know, give journalists that cheap headline. I'm mentioning this because the only way I can really start talking about this game is by pointing out the similarities to another game I played recently, and this doesn't negate my views on the game or anything, but I noticed this pretty early on and it makes explaining the game a hell of a lot easier. So with that said, No Straight Roads is basically no more heroes but about music. And that's not a bad thing, rather a little unexpected. When I first saw this game posted on Twitter back in 2019, my brain immediately went Oh, this is just a hack and slash game, similar to Devil May Cry. And while I'm right on the assumption, I'm kind of wrong at the same time. No Straight Roads is a hack and slash of sorts, but the overall level structure and setup is very similar to No More Heroes. No Straight Roads is a story about music, or rather a musical revolution. In the town of Vinyl City, EDM is the biggest craze at the moment, and is basically the dominant source of music since it's currently hitting the top of the charts, and it has basically no competition. And this is all thanks to a company called NSR who scouted out the best talent from all across the world and brought them into the city. The game starts off with an interview of an upcoming rock band called Bunk Bed Junction where two musicians called Mayday and Zook are about to go on stage and perform in front of the judges to win a spot within the company. They have a passion to reintroduce rock into the industry and hopefully bring back some much needed variety into Vinyl City. So once the interview is over, you make your way onto the stage to perform in front of the judges to see if your music is powerful enough to be deemed worthy to join the company. And within this section is the tutorial for the game. Because Zook and Mayday perform with different instruments, they have a different style of combat to play around with. Mayday is a more heavy hitting class, dealing more damage with each swing of her guitar, while Zook is more of a combo type setup, where he performs better when there's more beats between each attack. The only thing the duo share is the ability to parry certain hits, which are indicated by a specific colour. And while this is fine, I do like the parry system, it feels a little underdeveloped. It works when it wants to, and when it does, it does it incredibly well. But actually trying to figure out the optimal time to parry is a bit tricky. I get confused between if it's actually down to the attack animation, or the music itself. As with this being a music themed story, a lot of the attacks work in sync with the music of the boss battle. After doing what seems like a good job, they get kicked out of the competition because the leader of NSR, Tatiana, states that rock is a dead concept and has no spot in modern music since EDM is somehow far superior. And then she just flat out bans any more rock artists from entering the contest. So why is rock dead? No idea. But what you learn shortly after is that NSR's recruitment trials look at one key factor. It's not the music itself, it's rather can you power up the power meter because it turns out that NSR is not only a big record label, they're also in charge of Vinyl City and provide power to the people who live within it. So thanks to the power of music, Vinyl City has a productive and efficient way to produce power, which is great, or rather it would be great if there was enough power to go around. It seems that Vinyl City encounters a lot of blackouts, and after seeing an overview of the city, it appears that NSR prioritises the concerts over the people. So after the anger of being kicked out, Rock being banned, and then discovering the poor morals of the company, Mayday and Zook decide to take matters into their own hands, with the end goal being fair distribution of power, and also allowing the variety of music to flow throughout the city. And without a second of a doubt, Bunkbed Junction make their way to the first concert. 
and this is where the main objective of the game kicks in. Your main objective is to make your way to a concert hall and hijack it. What this means basically is head in, beat the boss, which is the artist currently performing at the venue, and then take over it. However, in Vinyl City, the artists who are performing actually own the district, so once you beat them, you take over that district. In total, there's five different districts to progress through, each with their own distinct theming, like you've got a futuristic district, a classical music district, modern art, space in the universe, and then finally, I'm guessing anime? I think when you see the boss, this one will make more sense. The sea is a gift to the world. Oh, I agree. I love going to the beach and catch seahorses. Don't take Mayday too seriously, I doubt she could even catch slow moving turtles. To fight against the artist within the concert, you first have to make your way through a sort of long hallway where you'll be breaking through several barriers and waves of enemies right before getting to the main event. As a concept, I really like this, especially in the levels like when fighting towards the fifth composer since the level structure is actually pretty pleasing to travel through, but the enemies you go against outside the boss really do lack that variety. I think throughout the game I encountered four different enemy ties. One just punches the floor, another has beam shooting out of it, another is a stationary turret, and the last one is just a turret that's in the air. They don't really develop throughout the game either, and it gets pretty easy towards the end of the game. As for the bosses themselves, they're actually really fun. Each boss plays out differently, ultimately the same goal, but the attack patterns are very unique. Like in the fight against Zook's old band partner, she'll split the two characters apart so you have to keep switching back and forth between them to actually fight the boss. Or with the robot boy band, the moment you destroy a droid, another one's just replaced because they're built on demand. I think out of all the bosses though, my favourite one definitely has to be the first boss, DJ Supernova, and then the final fight against Tatiana. All the bosses in this game are decent regardless though, and have great music to accompany them as well. Especially the final boss, that music is just so good. Oh yeah, and there is a boss that is basically Hatsune Miku, but as a mermaid. Love, love, oh. Yeah, sure. So outside of hijacking a concert and beating a boss, you'll be taken back to your hideout where you can level up Mayday and Zook, upgrading weapons with mods and extra attacks, getting a briefing onto the next boss fight, and even be involved with interviews which will garner you more fans which is basically just converted into XP to level up. Once you're done with tinkering with your instruments, you can then go and explore the streets of Vinyl City, as once you beat a district, you'll unlock an extra portion of the city, making it one step closer to confronting the headquarters of NSR. Visually, this game looks great. I absolutely love Wonder around the different districts and finding little secrets like stickers and extra power cells to power up broken bits and pieces through the city, but one detail I absolutely adore is the initial hub area. Basically, there's big screens that you'll see throughout it which will then portray the next boss you're about to fight. It doesn't really give you any insight into what to expect from the bosses, but it does give you that extra pinch of personality. As for what else you can do in Vinyl City, um. There's not a lot really. Like I said, there's stickers and power cells you can find throughout the map, and there's also some items you can interact with to get a response from either Mayday or Zook. But as for mini games and side missions, this game doesn't have a lot to offer. The only thing I can think of outside the bosses is that there's a second boss fight against Zook's brother which is introduced into the story. He basically wants to prove who's better in the means of a rap battle, and as a plot point I can get behind this since there's clearly some issue between the two. And you hear this within the lyrics of the rap battle, but the rap battle themselves? It's probably my least favourite thing about this game. Battling DK West isn't fun in the slightest. Sure, the music is alright, but the main part of his battles is trying to get both hands to the end and avoid taking damage. Which sounds simple enough, but after the first battle it gets super confusing and my hand-to-eye coordination just struggles to keep up, because both hands are different joysticks on the controller. It's almost as if the battles with DK West were designed with co-op in mind. Oh yeah, did I mention this game has co-op? Because it does. I can't tell you how it plays because it's couch co-op and I have no one to play with, but yeah, this game surprisingly has co-op. There's nothing bad with that, I honestly think that's pretty cool. Besides DK West, the only other thing you can really do in Vinyl City is revisit the bosses with extra difficulty attached. Once the district is opened, a ladder to the left of the entrance will be open for you to go down, and from here you're sent back to the entrance of the concert hall, and if you speak to someone outside, you'll unlock a harder version of the fight which you can then go through and beat to unlock something called Crazy Mode. Instead of just being like a harder difficulty where attacks are stronger, Crazy Mode amps up things like increased attack speeds, different patterns, and some other surprises as well. Plus, if you beat the game, you'll unlock another mode called Parry Mode for all of the bosses, and in this mode, you can only deal damage by parrying. And if you can beat that mode, you unlock Perfect's Parry Mode, which I would love to play, but I'm not very good at parrying. Fascinating. 
Hmm, that is fascinating. Your limited aspirations, your misplaced efforts. You remind me of... Pluto. I'm in a really weird stance with No Straight Roast because I really enjoyed my time with it, like to a point where I beat it in one sitting of about 8 hours. But I think that what bugs me most about it is, for what you get for the most part, this game is a great time, but I feel like I haven't got enough on my plate to be fully satisfied. What the game sets out to do, it does incredibly well. The soundtrack is really good to listen to, the combat works outside the parrying, and I really love how the bosses are in sync with the music. But I feel like the biggest letdown is the overall build up to the bosses and the quantity of bosses in the game. If you don't include the final boss, you make your way for about 5 different bosses, and I can imagine for a few, that won't take long to beat. I feel like if No Straight Roads was in development for longer and added a couple more districts then I could probably recommend this at full price. I still personally really like the game but I don't think it's fully worth the money unless they iron out a few of the kinks. My final notes for the game would have to be this low, if you're a fan of games like No More Heroes then No Straight Roads is something that should definitely be on your list of interests, it's worth your time and while it's shorter it does provide a solid level of enjoyment. But regardless of how confident you think you are if you're playing alone just avoid DK West, he's really not the best.